Okay, man, here we go. Here we go. Whoop. It's Ted's here, so uh, let's get the intro. Is it Tenebra or Tenebra? It's Tenebra. Tenebra. Crazier out there. Hey, hey, everybody! What? What's going on? Hey, Roof. welcome to the Late Late Horror Show. I am Dino. Ted Rico. As always. Black and I'm black and I'm back, y'all. <laughs> well, you what? What are you? Yeah, um, yeah. you still like white to me? Um, hey, everybody! Uh, good to see you, Edward Stewart, RTN Trace. Oh my God, you guys can't hear me. I, I apologize for the audio tonight because I didn't get the stand, and I'm going to look over here, and you're not going to hear me as good. But when I come back here, you'll hear me just fine. So I apologize about the audio. I wish we could get. But I wish you could zoom on on <laughs> what it's how okay. it's rigged. Here. Should we say it? Okay, I've got my microphone. You know the one you usually see that that's all like glowing uh -huh. and everything. It's rigged with duct tape on the ground, connected to a stool. Yes. So it's all rigged because I for, just because I forgot the stand and don't know where it's at. You you're you're just a so, handy guy. You know if, you know. If it's, the chicks it's, don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's very yeah. We're sitting here looking at it, and it's, but it is the all-purpose tool. Welcome everybody, uh, Sine Tracy. I thought RTN, it fell down when Ed, I came in here. Edward Dave Buffet, uh, you're coming in fine. He says you guys sound great, Tracy, uh, Kathy, Cowfart. What's going? On? Love Cowfart. Oh my God. I don't like to smell uh, them. No, no, not not the methane, not the Ooh. smell, not the smell, not the smell. But uh, good, me, good to see everybody here today. You can't see any of them. Um, I can't, can I? No. But we are going to have some fun uh, while we talk about a serious movie, uh, Tenebra. Tenebrae. Uh, Tenebrae. Tenebra. Or Tenebra. Uh, Ten whatever. Uh, it's, it's this movie. With a B R A E, you know. But te Tenebrae, uh, 1982, Dario Argento. 1982, the greatest year for movies. Um, yes, we've talked about I don't know this. if I put this one on the list. It wasn't <laughs> horrible, but... No, I, yeah. I mean, I think you were just talking about this is like the end of the Dario Argento like run with his good films. There's still some good movies to come, but yeah. that, that good run he had yeah. Of, yeah. of pretty kick-ass movies. Right, right. Kind of, you know... Yeah. I mean, we would still get opera, and we would get... Uh, well, opera, definitely. You know, yeah, um, I loved it. Like, you know, ten Tenebrae... Inferno. Inferno, another good one. Some people like... Uh, what's the one with all the damn bugs? I, I can't remember. The bugs? Yeah, it, it's like Jennifer Connelly's first movie. Oh, Phenomena. Uh, Phenomena. Phenomena. Yeah, I don't yeah. watch that, because I want to see a bunch of bugs in the movie. You don't want to see a bunch of bugs? Mm -mm. Well, I put this at the bottom of, of all of the uh, Giallo films that Dario Argento did... Uh, I still love the movie. It's still great, uh, but it just lacks a lot of the style, story, and characters from all the other ones. You have to make some so. leaps yeah. to sort of put it all together. Uh, Story-wise, yes. It's not impossible to do, no. and I think we'll all come to the same conclusion. But eh, they could have done a little bit of better job of pointing things out. Uh, McDougal's never seen the movie. No? That's, a, that's okay. Giallo. Make sure you watch the version that's about 140 minutes. There is a version, I think it might even be on Tubi, mm -hmm. and it's called Unsane. That was the American version. Yeah. It is very chopped up. So, okay. don't watch that one no. if you want to see the whole movie. Oh, definitely not, because the one we watched is chopped yeah. up to begin with. I mean, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, but it stars also Dario, uh... Nickelodeon, right? Darian, yeah, who passed away not too terribly long ago. Who passed away not too she long ago. She was in, um, uh, what was she in? Oh, jeez, I don't know. What were the other movies by him that we did? Was oh, she in she, Bird, of the Crystal, Bird with the Crystal yes, Plume? Yes, she, she was, was in that. She was in, She's a, in, a, oh, she was in a few of his movies. I think How deep, come all these red? Italian girls, had, yeah, 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 Deep Red, Deep, deep red, red, yes. That's the one I was thinking of. Yes, yes, the, what, the greatest of all why time. Why do all these Italian girls just have dingy teeth? I don't you know, know. So like, that's where some of them are so hot, and then they get these dingy ass teeth. Uh, Ted is back. Yep. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> these are the things that I'm going to point out. <laughs> that's the movie that's... starts. Yeah. It's it's sort of interesting. It's uh, Dario's typical point of view, 
of uh, someone ripping out pages of a book. We and got John Saxon in oh, this John too. Saxon. But anyways, yeah. You know, and you know, you assume this is probably the killer, and you know, he's saying quotes and things. And then we get to New York City. Well, what, what's the first thing that they say in the um, at the beginning of this film is when he's ripping those books out, and I you can't hear remember him. what the hell he says. Well, it's it's about the perversion. Yeah. And the killing takes that away mm -hmm. is what he was basically Killing saying and stop the perversion yeah that's what yes. the killer is doing he's deciding himself or herself yes who is which is the big, who is perverted yeah, yeah. and a blight on society and he's yeah. you know taking it upon himself and then then we get to meet our our, our main character peter neal an author and yes. i immediately find him to be a douchebag oh he's a douchebag why yeah, yeah. Because he's going to the airport and he's riding a bike. He's not going to, to the airport. No. Yeah, he is. He's uh, going I'm, to doing, the I'm doing a giant uh, oh. Seinfeld thing. <laughs> he's going to the airport. I'm not driving. And when to the he airport. gets there, a car pulls mm. up and gives him like his suitcase and his change of clothes. On this douchebag decided <laughs> I'm going to get my cardio in before I get on the plane. Yeah. Right. I'm going to have this schlub drive and follow my ass yeah, to the airport. Yeah. And, You're he, a and he's, wear, he's wearing a big what is that? A leisure suit, almost kind of oh, thing. I don't know, looking. 80s workout suits. Yeah, I don't know. They looked very lame. You know, like what you always uh, saw, like uh, Pauly and the Sopranos wearing? Yeah. Track suit. Tra track track suit. suit. That's it. <laughs> track suit. Track suit. Um, but yeah. Uh, and he has to change his clothes before he, you know, gets yes. on the plane. He's got his suit and his bag. But, but Peter Neal is an author mm -hmm. who has come to Italy. He's right? going to Italy to promote his new book, yes. do some interviews. He's an American actor. Now, that's a little bit different for these films as well. True. Um, it's got right. a couple of American actors. Hey, in WWM. A couple of uh, early American locations. I don't know if that was actually shot in New York, if they just used stock footage for the, you know, yeah, you know, the, right, right, you know New York City on the on and the Stair Pike side. Cheerio. What's going on? Oh, we got someone from across the pond. Uh, Stair Pike. He's our eldest. He's our elder of the chat. Oh, he's no kid. Ninety-four years old. What? Wow. Still going. I think it's ninety-four, but ni yeah, still you know he's 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 smart as a whip. He he was around when they did uh, vaudeville and all that other good stuff. He's got stories galore. He, he hopped trains when he was a kid. I mean, the whole nine yards, you know. So uh, good to have Stair Pike here. All right. um, so we're, in, we're in. And I'm trying to get this, but when me and Ted go off on our tangents, you know, it is what it is. Well, if the so, movies uh, were better, we wouldn't. But, but <laughs> you, you get... You, well, we'll be doing some good movies. Uh, Hell and, yeah. And John Saxon plays Bulmer, who's his kind of agent. He's, he's his agent. Yep. Yeah, it's his, his literary agent. agent. And uh, Dario Nicolotti in here plays um, uh, Anne, who is his assistant, I guess, in Italy. Yeah, and you could tell to there's help a little him get around. romantic tension between the two. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess because he's, he's known her for six years, and later on in the film, you kind of They mack figure a little out, bit. Yeah, they kind of mack they a mack. little bit, you know. But there, there's also um, Gianni. Gianni. Who comes out. And uh, he's going to be his assistant, too. He'll drive him right. wherever he wants. Drive him, carry his bags. You know, yeah, get know. me some bananas, yeah, you know, go, you whatever. Know. Go get me but, some uh, Italian bananas. Go Chris get, W., what's going on? Go get me a hooker. Julie know, Osborne, good to see you. Um, get you a hooker. Go yeah. get me a hooker. <laughs> whatever. Go get me a cheap uh, hooker. Go get me a chicken head. But right off the bat, too, that kid, did you notice most of the scenes? He, he acted like he was this, like... Especially when they were sitting on the floor and getting the clues together and all that. Mm -hmm. he, he's like leant over, like laughing, like giddy, like he was giddy. Like like the director just said, oh, let here, have fun. And the, he acted like he was 14 years old. He's annoyed, stoned. It annoyed the hell out of me. I read on IMDb that he dropped acid before that scene. No. No. Probably. <laughs> hey, hey, I wouldn't, wouldn't put it past him. He dropped it. Because later, later uh, Elsa, the uh, hotel's... Uh, owner's daughter, I oh, believe. Oh, the hotel owner's daughter. Um, Elsa. Uh, you know what? Dar Daria Nicoloni, she's she's a little... She's got what? something to her. She's, she's, yeah, she's got some dingy teeth, though. Well, Zoom on those. Okay, I didn't notice All a these Italian teeth. girls got gray teeth. But but she, she's a little... They need some Topol Smokers tooth polish. There's a, <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> what was some of the old-time radio ones? I'm trying to think of some old... Um, just Colgate. Colgate. Tooth powder. <laughs> How gross to put powder on your teeth. Uh, yeah, some baking I never, soda. That's what I mean. <laughs> hey, it'll do the job. Wet their toothbrush, dip it in baking soda, and just go to town for but, but an hour Elsa, or two. But Elsa, she's a very cute girl. Comes up and, and 
she meets up with this Gianni guy, you know, and, and he, he they, they get all giddy and, you know, because they're both young, you know, and they get on the motorcycle. Hey, and take off. teenagers. And, and we'll get to that a little bit later on, but lets her off in nowhere land and, and mm-hmm. because he's not getting none, I guess, from her. But anyways, okay, so we're at the yeah. airport. airport. Uh, Peter Neal uh, does a stupid thing that he, no, nobody should do. Right, but in the 80s, you could do that. You could set your bag down and walk away yes. to go get a call because you're being paged. Exactly. And, he's oh, and he walked away and left it right in line. Like, you mm-hmm. know, that's going to hold my place. Don't you see how this movie has a lot of red herrings in it? A lot of red Dario herrings. Dario likes to just throw something in there to make you think something else is going on. So yeah. when Peter Neal's on the phone. Hey, and, Vincent White. And it turns out to be yeah. his fiance. Yes. Why have you not called me in six weeks? And, you know, the, you could tell that Tommy Myers falling apart. Yeah. And he's telling her, you know, like, bitch, I'm going to hang up on you. Yeah. I'm just going to hang up the phone. Yes. Um, little does he know she's calling him from the airport. We find that out in a few minutes. She comes out of the phone. A few book. minutes, yeah. But his yeah. bag is right there. He looks over and there's just this old lady with a babushka standing by the bag yeah. looking sus. Somebody a pack in your bag. <laughs> yeah. Look I didn't a... see who I did. And no. Looking suspicious. <laughs> so there's 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 a red herring right there. There's the bag. You know. But yeah, and her name is Jane? Who, the old lady? No, his uh, ex, his fiance, ex fiance, like, whatever. The credits were is, detailed. Is Jane um, McCarroll, and yeah. she, she's got this long black oh, hair, that dark the hair. black sunglasses, a hat, a mm-hmm. big old dress. You know, summer in uh, Italy. Summer you know? in Italy. But uh, she's and his bag torn is up, missing man. a little bit at first. Yes. You know, he can't find his bag. It's not where he left She's it. She's oh, torn up, here. and so is the clothes in the bag. That's right. When he gets to Italy, he says, I've got some gifts for you. Opens it up, and everything, the track suit, everything. I think, what do you get her? A watch. It's all messed up. Yes, he can't yeah. understand it. Ster- Sterpike says, uh, we used uh, uh, to brush our teeth with salt and baking soda when I was a child. Now, so. see, now if that's good enough for him, that should be good enough for everybody else. And that's got to be back, yeah, back see, in the And they got plenty 20s. of baking soda, and they got plenty of salt in Italy. So there ain't no reason to be having these great dingy <laughs> teeth. Come on, brush the teeth. I'm not saying they got to be pearly white because that looks phony too. Yeah. But something in between, all right? Oh, yeah. Not oh, baked yeah. beans, but not, you know, <laughs> cigarette ashes either. Oh, jeez, <laughs> please don't get me started. <laughs> so. uh, anyways, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, we, we jump from there. Uh, Can we get this side scene? Uh, just a side scene that really just is there for a kill. Yes. Just to have a kill. There's... um. Some young girl who uh, mm-hmm. was very beautiful, you know. It's not bad. But uh, sh- she she goes to the bookstore. It looks like she's in the old D and K junk store. <laughs> oh, you guys may not know what D and K. I don't think there was a the junk store here. It's sort of like a five, and I had a little bit of everything in it. A five and, and that's what this reminds me of. Is what it um, was. You know, there's I don't know. There's books. There's perfume. perfume there's, yeah, there's all what, kinds there, of it's, stuff. it's got everything. There's yeah. no I don't know rhyme or reason to it. You know. Yeah. But she swipes a book, gets caught, offers to blow the detective to yeah, basically, what? you know, to let her go. I like how she dr- slides the book in her purse. She's a pro. She's, she's holding two and she lets one slide in. Yeah, yeah. And they catch her mm-hmm. and, and yeah, and she's going, what do you do? What do you do? What do you hey, do? she's stealing a book. I, I caught give, you. I, I give you blow. You coming to my house later? No. Oh, yeah, I give you a dress. Look at look at uh, look at a manhandling her in the store too. Oh, man. it was the eighties. Hand on the ass and they you could, know, come on and it was the eighties. They could do that and you know mm-hmm. slap her around a bit and then they, you know, now she's gonna get sued. Yeah, so you know, she like makes a little happened. arrangement yeah. to meet him Anyways, later for a little yeah. whatever, a little ooh la la. I'm not judging. A- Edward and Stewart says uh, Claudio Simoncini. Uh, Fabio Pignati, oh, whatever. He's, he's talking members of Goblin over there. Yes, it's a, there you go. See, oh, I know who he's guitar, talking about. Guitar player for Goblin. Yeah, so, yeah, you start mentioning those names, you got my attention. I know yes. them. We know Goblin, man. They did a concert. I didn't get to go, but uh, they've come to Cleveland a few times. But hey, John they did David, a concert here. Not well. It was before the pandemic. Yeah. Um, at the Beachland, and they were playing clips of the movies and stuff like that with it. Oh, of the, yeah. the movies that they did. Well, it was like the newer version. There's like a newer version of Goblin. Okay. It's got like, you know, there's like Goblin and then there's like Goblin, what is it called? Goblin Requiem or I, I don't know what yeah. the hell it's called. There's some other version Well, it's like of Journey, it. you know, you get the Steve Perry Journey and then you get, it's it's Journey, but it's a different guy and, and he, he sings it better, but I don't, it's not the same. Who listens to Journey? Uh, That's like what moms listen to. I mean, <laughs> you wait. can't even feel cool driving around listening to Journey. What? If he ever 
<laughs> what I, the heck? You just feel so stupid. I feel like a big tool bag. I like some of the Journey hits, man. Uh, you ain't got no taste in Journey music, though. Oh, please. Oh, please. Ninja, please. You know what I've been listening to lately? <laughs> what? Is, is a lot of, um, uh, I just really, it just popped up one time in, in my, like, stream. Tell me. And uh, some, uh, 2022, some some French jazz. French jazz. It, it's it's so, so good. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't even tell you. I can't oh, even damn. tell you. But anyways, okay. So getting back to the film. The oh, girl, so he lets her go because yeah, he, he thinks go. he's going to get a little, little yeah. something, something I'll see later. later on, you know. And so you, know, you see her get off a motorcycle. She picked up some dude, got off a motorcycle. She's walking to her place. And this dirty, this gross, grimy greasy, bum. grimy, stinky ass <laughs> bum just grabs her. Yes. And starts molesting and manhandling her right in the middle of the street. Yeah, not good. Not and good. she runs off. But he's still, you know, chasing her. But... You know, she gets back in her apartment. And what a then, stupid character, too, this yeah, old bum. He's, he's like, ah, 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 Like he's some monster or something. Oh, and look. Like oh, remember when she smashes his fingers in the yes. grating? That's pretty good. Yeah, she bruises it. And, and what's going to end up happening here is, you know, she's going to get killed. Evidently, this killer's watching her. Yes. He kind of stakes out the, the women that he wants. And because she's, you know... A little little Jezebel. Yeah. And how does she get it? She gets a, a razor. Uh, it, well, yeah. Right? A- MF uh, V Boas just watched the 4K yesterday. It was interesting to see the U.S. cut. Uh, insane. I preferred it pacing wide, but sadly, substantially cut. Right, right. So, there are yeah. some gaps in it. There's some parts in this movie that could have been tightened up a little bit, so... I'm sure the U.S. cut does that. Dave Pousset says, no, 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 it's all about David McNaughton, LOL. And he mm-hmm. leaves a link there. Not sure what that means. That's David because we're McNaughton. talking and you ain't following is that, is the that a, Is that a music? Some, anyways, it's somebody musical. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But anyways, yeah, she does get uh, in her apartment and she's... Basically brings it down to the T-shirt only. Uh, you got you guys got to remember that every female in this character in this movie is, mm-hmm. and most of Dario Argento's Argento's movies do not wear bras. So I mean, are they really that necessary? <laughs> <laughs> but I I wonder how much. Uh, he had to have some kind of influence. I mean, I know back in the day, Italy, the early 80s, late 70s, I mean, they were free. They, they, they really well, just didn't wear bras too you know, much. He, but, he made some very, you know, I don't I don't necessarily want to use the word misogynistic, but, yeah, you know, yeah. this genre in general yes. does that with women. Right. And Exactly. Um, yeah. I think he had been a, you know... Maybe in some of the magazines and the trades, he was certainly accused of being a, a purveyor of that a little bit. And in a way, this movie is sort of his response to it, yeah. in a way, because he's dealing, you know, yes, women are being treated, but he's dealing with someone who's, you know, obviously got some yeah, deep-seated, perverted issues. And oh, yeah. And, and it there's, all there's goes... There's several things in this movie that are a little a little different. Yes. And, and I'll talk about that in a second. John David... $20 Super Chat, thank you very, very much, uh, says, these are great big thank you. How do we gift How do we gift Chris W. a membership? Um, it, it's random. When you gift a membership uh, on the channel, it's kind of random for people who are in the chat. As long as people are chatting and somebody's able to gift a membership, you, I think you've got to be a member in order to gift a membership, but I'm not 100% sure. But it's random, so it's you're not necessarily going to get it if you hit that gifting membership. It's It could go to anybody. So, um, yeah, so that's all I could say about that. But I do appreciate the $20, John David. I really, really do. That's Thank all, you. That's awesome. And Steerpike does say Tenebrae is a beautiful service. Traditionally, it only... Traditionally lit only by candlelight, the candles are extinguished during the service, leaving only one which is carried still out of view. Huh. Not sure. Well, isn't that what they use, like in Hanukkah or something? Isn't that a tenebra? Isn't that what it's called? I don't understand oh. necessarily what it okay, okay, refers okay. to in the film. In the darkness, I'm, I'm there is a sudden a boom, symbolizing hell's doors bursting open. The lit candles is brought back and set in a holder. Then the people leave in... Total silence. Okay, very interesting stuff there, Stairpike. Stairpike's a wealth of knowledge, I tell you that much, Ted. 
Um, I would love to have Stair Clearly. Pike on the, the, the channel for an interview, but that's if, if you're up to it and all that good stuff. But, um, man, people would love that. That would be great. But, uh, again, John David, thank you. And um, Anani Moose, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so, yeah, uh, the killing of that girl in her apartment was, uh, yeah. Oh, it was stuffed pages of the book. Tenebrow. In her mouth. Because he's going to start. And this is a little complex. Uh, you'll find out a different ending than what's going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, the killer is taking the book and putting it in her mouth while he's killing her. And uh, he also leaves a letter and a note to Right, we get Peter. another point of view shot yes. in the hotel. Yes. And you were saying he slides a, a letter under the door. Yes, yes. <clears throat> but uh, kind of funny, when Peter Neal gets to his hotel room... Yeah. <coughs> excuse me. Aren't the cops already there? The cops are already we'll there. figure that one out. Well, it, the cops said that the door was open. <laughs> right? Yeah, sure. Someone left the door hey, I open. I thought it was open. This is Italy, man. The door is open. Door. What do you mean? I... Oh, I had also read. I got the demand. She what? That normally, when films are shot in Rome, normally, normally, who's that? No, is he? A, he's a normally. character. Normally, normally, was he the waiter? No. Normally, no, I don't remember his role. He also played in the Three Stooges. Normally, normally, yeah, he he was the guy that. Uh, uh, tripped up Shemp uh, when they were dressed up like gypsies. Oh. Anyways, go on. Okay, so normal <laughs> normally when a film is shot in Rome, you'll yeah. see common Roman structure, architecture, things like that. Yeah, he purposely stayed away from that. Damn in him. This film. Damn him. And I, I had I read that why. he was sort of going through, like he almost wanted to make it seem like it takes place, say, ten years from when the movie was made. Yeah, but I'm not really getting that vibe from this movie. No. I don't see anything that sort of looks futuristic at all no no um you know it just but that's what i had read that he was going for well i think it was a, a dumb idea on his part that's right <laughs> because the, we, we damn don't, dumb we don't feel that way at all dario, Sorry, dario. um Epic yeah fail. yeah nice try but you know uh fail. i mean come on the cars alone sitting outside i mean 10 years later they right. would look way different you know this ain't blade runner here so <laughs> yeah even I mean, it was that... made the same year but uh yeah so, so uh the, so you, the you cops are there, them. and they they find Who's that with them there? Who's the um the uh, agent John Saxon's character? What's his okay, name? Okay, John Saxon's B there. What's his name again? Uh, Bulmer. 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 Uh, Anne nice is name. there. Gianni is there, and this uh, police detective who you're gonna have to forgive me. I can't remember his name, but somehow yeah, I remember I that his partner's name is Altieri. Uh, so, go figure that. She's got, like, no part in the movie. Right. But I remember her name. Uh, and they find that letter on the floor. Like, evidently, yeah. the cops just stepped right over it. But, you know, it's like, hey, look what I found. I found a letter. Right, this is weird. Read it. Yeah, yeah. What is this? But, but yeah. But, but, <laughs> and and it's, it's talking about, uh, I, I forgot exactly what it says, but it's some cryptic stuff from the book. Peter Neal's most recent book. Yeah. Oh, and it turns out this this police detective's a big fan, has read his books, big mystery nut. Just and started he admits this that one. he can never figure out who the killer is. Yeah. This is the detective you want working on your case. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 he can never figure it out. That's And uh, then the phone rings. Thank you, Connie. Hello, Jerry Drouillard. Oh. Um, then the phone rings, and it's this, you almost can't tell. It's a very androgynous sounding voice. You can't necessarily tell if it's a man or it could be a woman. Well, again, that's what Dario Argento does in Giallo Flicks, you mm -hmm. know, period. They, they they make it seem like it could be either male or female. Right. And there's um, also another in, thing. Especially in, with Bird with the bird Crystal, crystal Plumage. Yes. Um, they you know, really those. get you there mm -hmm. with that one. So but later in again. this movie, there's another kind of thing we'll talk about yeah. and touch on, too, with that. So, but. again, you can't tell the voice, but he's talking to him saying, oh, you know, he's... You know, you've inspired me. We're going to do such great things together yeah. and all that stuff. And and then he makes the comment, or I'm going to say he, yeah. but uh, the voice, you know, said, uh, you know, I see a woman by you. Is that your lover? Oh, maybe she'll be next, but I've got great big plans. <laughs> and, you know, they look and there's a phone booth out there. So the cops are, you know, yeah. they're going out there and Peter Neal's trying to keep the person on the phone and mentions about the girl that got killed. Yeah. Well. You know, that throws the phone call off. He's like, how do you know about that? Who's that with you? Which, <laughs> yeah. that's actually pretty good. That's, yeah, yeah. you know, that was a big faux pas on Peter Neal's part. Right. But, you know, 
it was a good bit to put in the movie. Yeah. So then they hang up, and when they get out there, whoever was in that phone booth is gone. You know, the cops are, you know, very effective. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> like, dang it. You could have went that way <laughs> or that way. Well, we don't see him. No, no. Let's no. go. No. <laughs> in this movie, the, the police really are useless, uh, pretty much. They don't solve anything. That's no, for damn no, sure. No, no, They're useless. They're um, reactive. Uh, in in other Dario Argento movies, the the main uh, protagonist is usually mm-hmm. a stronger character, one you like a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, unlike Peter uh, in this film, that gets turned around by the end of the film. Uh, I yeah. feel I found him a little douchebaggy because of the bike thing. <laughs> because um, of the bike thing. Because right? of the bike thing. <laughs> uh, Mario, oh, you know uh, Mario Corrales is here. Colombiano yeah. dick the. Uh, what? <laughs> Adicto solo so films the the Dario Argento on a solido my my I'm butchering that. But hello to you if you understand English, which of course you do. You're tuning in, but you're typing I've in Italian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And switch keyboards. And hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully you're not saying nothing wrong. I don't know. I don't know man. <laughs> he could be saying Google Translate. He could be saying <laughs> right here to you guys. You guys who don't know no Dario Argento. Who, who do you think you're? Uh, and I know that's a bad Italian accent. You know, whatever. I, you know, I am Italian partially, but you know, whatever. You're that not doesn't Italian. mean it. Uh, I know I'm a mutt. I love everybody in America. <laughs> so loves, I, I'll go off on this. Loves to say that there's something else. Right, right. I'm right. Italian. I'm Polish. Nobody says they're Polish. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm this. I'm that. Go to them countries. Yeah. And ask where the bathroom is. And if you can't even do that, you don't. You're not part of that country. What the hell are, does it even mean? I don't even. Know what I'm saying is, if you can't even ask where the bathroom is in yeah. Italy, and people want to say I'm Italian. Oh, then, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. I got you. I got you. I think you're pretty, pretty well, much not an Italian. Th- there's... They certainly don't look at us like we're Italian. Or yeah, German no, or no, 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 no. They I don't mean, look at us that way. We have it in our genetic makeup. I know. Uh, I think it's just the words but, that people choose. Go, yes. I'm German. Like, how about you're American? Well, there was an episode of All in the Family that did that, where oh, yeah? uh, where he was ca- mm-hmm. calling on the phone and and um. Uh, they asked him, well, well, who are you? He goes, I'm an American. And, and then they said something else on the phone. And he goes, oh, okay, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an Italian-American. <laughs> or, or I'm an Italian. And, and they go, aha! <laughs> so he's like, uh, but anyways, getting back to all the right, movie. That's a, little, that's a little tweak in our, yeah. we all want to be something else. Ah. But Oh, we got some naked HD in the Wait, chat. what, what, what? <laughs> It's just spam bots that you know. Oh Usually, man. usually they're taking. No care chesty broads. Thank you, Ginger, for uh, taking care of that. Um, uh, says yuck. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about that except for uh, traveling fools. Nobody says there's po- they're Polish. <laughs> She's laughing. Says oh my Polish. god! Come on. <laughs> I mean, nobody admits to it anyway. <laughs> Uh, I feel sorry for my kids because I know my family tree because my dad Trey stars back. We don't have no Polish in us, but you know I married <laughs> I, I married a girl that's got Polish in her. I told my kids I go, I'm sorry, you, I kept you as pure as I could. Hey, <laughs> that's Ted for you. I don't know what to say, yeah. but anyway. well, because I, I think you know Polish people and fat people like me. I'm not Polish, but I'm fat. I, I think those are the only two people that we're still allowed to make fun of. Oh, really? Yeah, I think Polish people and fat people are still allowed to tell jokes and, oh, yeah. and say hurtful things. Okay. We haven't <laughs> we haven't gotten that woke yet. <laughs> I think we I think we have, but I you don't know. know. They're start, I, well, it'll be it'll be bad to say something bad about fat people before it's bad to say something about Polish people. No, oh, yeah, because yeah, okay. because you don't have Polish shaming, but you do have fat shaming. Yeah. Okay. So until we get to Polish shaming, okay. Right, okay. So. Hey, it's a free world. To, let Ted say, okay, so we're going to get to, where do we get to? Let's talk about oh, where well, we get to the beach girl, the flashback scene. After the scene with the police. Yes, yes. We get this kind of weird scene where this you beautiful just see a girl shadow. Wait, on no, the beach. there's a shadow okay. on the wall. The shadow. And you just hear a guy going, oh, oh, yeah. like, like he's really struggling with something. Or yeah. he got his schwanz caught in his zipper. Oh, jeez. Or, or something. Oh, no. But they don't show us. And then we immediately go to this hazy we think it's a flashback yes, yes. of a did you say beautiful girl on a beach i hope you didn't because this this girl's Listen, face let, just watch what you say please all right watch what you say we don't 
We, this is a different. Please, no, this is interesting. Please this is interesting. I'm yeah, not, let, I'm not well, be let's be let's be factual about how but, we say this. And so stuff, this but, is a this is a girl. Yeah. On a beach. Me and Ted still want to have fun, but this that, is serious. But this, so. this is a little thing that Dario, Dario intentionally does. did in the movie. Yes. And she's kind of on the beach, and she's wearing a dr- white dress, white summer dress, and these. If these you ask kinky, me, she, high yeah, heel yeah. red shoes. Yeah. Almost like something out of a David Lynch movie. Thus the the name Tenebrao, uh for the um, look at see we I mean we can't keep it I guess we offend too many people I don't know what's going on. Well, that was just the Polish people. Come that on, left. man, twenty six people. Come on, do we need to start stir up drama? Anyways, go on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, Vicky Alcorn, good to see you. Hopefully, you All guys right. enjoy me and Ted. I don't give a shit if five people are here for when me and Ted are talking about our movie reviews ah, but, uh, so we're gonna have fun anyways go on the um this the, is interesting yes so the scene plays out with uh some that's you know, right i tell it how it is she's with uh three guys <laughs> three guys and you see another one of dario's point of view shots coming in there and it's almost well, like she's she, trying to she's, cuckold him a little bit like i'm with these three. she's kneeling in front of him well almost, she's kneeling in front of him almost with like a white she, dress and and caressing their legs. The dress comes down and you, you get exposed to breast. Right. And, yeah. And uh, I think he... The guy comes up and smack slap, her, slaps, slaps her. her. Yep. They chase yes. him, get him down, and, and you see this girl take her heel yes. and put it in his mouth, almost in like a fellatio, oral rape kind of Yeah. They're, they're intentional. 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 Yes. Now, why is this scene interesting? You don't know when right. you're watching the movie. Yeah. But if you read about the movie, you find out that Dario intentionally hired a transgender actor yeah. to play that role. That's That was a, a man who was transitioning, not completely... Yeah. I don't know if that actor... I, I, try, I tried to look up some info, but I kind of ran out of time. Yeah. Um, so that's why... It was a transgender... Even when you look at that, that, yeah. that character... Like I was joking with Dino when he said, you know, beautiful woman. It's like, you can tell the face is just not quite right. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's not I'm, very feminine. I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to go out a limb here and say, I still thought it, it looked kind of beautiful to me, but I understand. Different strokes it's, it's, for different folks. It, no, no, not that. But, but you, you intentionally, know, you know what I'm saying, though? in the back of your I, mind, I you're watching going, know. yeah, from the neck up, there's just something not quite right and it. Plays with the back of your, you know uh, your brain a little bit. Did you know that I didn't catch that until you just said Neither it? Neither did I, but I me? always thought so. that, you know, couldn't he have picked a better looking actress? Come to find, he purposely didn't pick an actress. Yeah. You know, I know. I'm old. I'm going to say actress, <laughs> actress and actor. Um, that's, that's right. And, yeah. and that's why. Yeah, no. That's why. It's, it's very interesting. But you know? th- that flashback has purpose and meaning, mm-hmm. uh, I guess, a little bit. I mean... We can't give that I see, away. all the people that just left missed that. <laughs> I, I can't. I don't know what it is. When we get together, Ted, we, we kind of. We kind of what? We kind of get wild and we say things that are not supposed to be said nowadays. And I I, oh. I, I would hope that people don't. It's think, America. You're allowed to say uh, whatever you want. You are. That's right. Uh, but. Uh, some, I'm not cussing. Some people get offended. And, and, and I would hope that they would understand that everything is in jest. And not mean spirited. You know what my opinion is on that. You know, if someone gets offended, yes. they probably deserve to be offended. No, oh, there you go. You, again, you, you should. So here's my apology and one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, continuing on, continuing yes. on. Um, I, I don't. Think, so that sort of, you know, yeah. you're like, what? What's this all about? And I don't think who's you, thinking of this. Well, we, we, we presume it's the killer. R- this is okay. The killer had this happen to him, so now he hates women, and y- you know, yes. he's going after. Skanky, slutty, you know, yes, yes. sexually depraved women, and we'll put that on the back shelf for it till a little bit right. later because it does have meaning. And um, in the meantime, there was a a reporter who, uh, when he did get off the plane, yeah, earlier, yeah, we skipped that. That was on him about, and she, he knew her for yeah, many they were years. friends, yeah. But she was going at him hard because she's like, this book, you know, why what do you, you hate women? Yeah, why do you hate women? Why do you why why the the hatred? Why the perverse nature of your book what is wrong with you mm-hmm. and he goes wait a second and john saxon comes over settles it down and puts them back uh you know so pretty much says let's have a meeting yeah we'll have a separate time. interview for this all you right? know yeah and you do and, see a couple other reporters standing around and um peter neal does you know like who was that other guy that was just standing there and yeah he mentions that he's a uh, 
he has like a talk show segment. Yeah. And that he's actually going to be doing an interview on TV. Right. Maybe the next day or something like that. Um, but he didn't say anything. He noticed that he was just kind of standing there aloof and didn't really say anything. Cow fart. Uh, try to offend me. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of man. <laughs> That's what I'm talking well, about. Well, I mean, hey, you know. It's, what, it's, does anybody say anything? Uh, the mummy and the monkey. Hey, what's going on? Uh, Everybody's The mummy and the here. monkey. Uh, good to see you guys. Well, they're all here. And then they <laughs> pitter-patter away. But, you know, again, this is the what you get from me and Ted. So, you know, again, every show's a little different. Isn't me, that what they love, Me and though? Ted, huh? Isn't that what they love? Uh, you would. What I do you mean, want? You Package? Know? You want it to be like every other friggin' show out there? Exactly. No, I, I'm That's with you. That's right. I'm with you. I'm on the train, man. That's right. Um, Buy the ticket. Take the ride. So that same, <laughs> so that same woman... <laughs> Who was at him about, you know, the what do you hate about women? Right. She, she goes back and evidently she's um, lesbian. Yes. And she's got a girlfriend who uh, is... Uh, at, Not bad looking at all. Oh, I like the journalist way better. No. Are, are you... You're high. Hey, listen, listen. You are high. Me and... Listen, you got different tastes. You didn't That's think all. that her girlfriend who's evidently goes both ways because she's <laughs> hanging all over this guy playing space invaders oh, in the bar man. isn't that what they're doing they're playing space invaders it's the old style 80s arcade game you didn't think she was better looking you thought this skinny scraggly haired yeah. sickly looking lady was better looking she wasn't scaggly hair sickly looking woman. the other one was voluptuous beautiful long thick black hair bosoms uh, a butt and I'm not talking a little skinny, but I'm talking something you could take a car antenna and smack on there a few times. Well, that's what I, there's nothing wrong with her. Damn She's right, very beautiful. Um, I just said I like the, the journalist. Well, but anyway, I like an hourglass figure. They man. get together, okay, and she gives. And, and the reason you know it is because. She's uh, in this like bar area or something. Yeah, it's, it's a bar. It, it's an Italian bar, and and you know, and I'm sorry about the uh, the bots. I guess I'm going to have to do that on me and Ted's. What's going on? Uh, oh, just spammy make, kind of stuff. Yeah, popping I'm, I'm going to have to fix it like I do the overnights. Uh, All right. Because um, they'll keep doing it, I guess, uh, on purpose. You know, so it is what it is. Um, but in the bar, she gives her a big old kiss on the lips, and she's pissed because technically. Her girlfriend's a prostitute. Yeah. And well, well, she certainly seems she, like it. She doesn't. She doesn't like that she's doing this. And she's telling. Yeah. She's telling us like, you know, don't don't bug me. I'm gonna go do my thing, and yeah. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Like, and they don't even live together. They live in the same apartment. One lives above the other. Yeah. One's upstairs. One, well, it, it's not the same house. It looks sort of like an apartment building to me. Okay. Well, I don't. Know, could it, could it be a house? I think it's the same house. But anyway, she Maybe gets. Maybe it's a house. The journalists and her get back home. Mm-hmm. And well, no, um, the other one's already upstairs, man. She's she, the, the voluptuous one is upstairs yeah. with a towel around her showing oh, her bosom, man. And she's all wet, her hair's wet. Let me ask you a question um, Why do you think that Dario chose to let her be a little bit naked and this other one that you find more attractive not be naked at all? I have no idea. You want me to tell you why? Because <laughs> she ain't good looking. <laughs> There, look at that Anyways. scene right there. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that's she's an not, Italian woman. I'm not right saying there. she's not good looking. Oh, she's better looking. But I'll she's tell the you best what, best looking woman in a what, movie I've seen in a long time. During the entire scene of them in this apartment, and the she killing, makes my socks roll up and down. And the killing that goes on, <laughs> and she's got a towel or a blanket around her. Uh, the water, no! the water and the moisture, and there is some. There's yeah, you get chesty is what you get here. Uh, McDougal. Anyways, look, look, look right um, there. Look, you yes, see yes, little I thickness see. right there. Oh, gosh. that's what. That's what. Okay. Anyways, she's, she's, she stays wet the entire through the entire scene. That's even better. So it's either a hundred degrees there, or they kept spraying her with water all over. I wish I had that job. <laughs> but you do it. <laughs> but Esmeralda, stand still. But the journalist is downstairs, and for some reason. She's next to get it. Mm-hmm. And the journalist comes in and says something really creepy. I forget what he says, but in that voice, or her, right. him, or her. Sometimes that's a little yeah. hard to make out. Yeah. You know, oh, I got to say, because it was just funny, because they're arguing yeah. when, when the journalist comes home. And I forgot her name. And her, you know, lover's upstairs. And she goes, out, do you want me to tell you how it was? It was amazing. You know, he, he plowed me three ways to Sunday, and it was wonderful. <laughs> you know, and, 
<laughs> then she gets all just, and then she goes in there and gets killed. And she gets killed with uh, was was it? It's a razor. A razor blade. as well. It's a razor blade. Well, later on, we'll find out why she was. Probably a reason why she was killed. Okay. Because when once you know who the killer is, yes. Okay, it maybe makes a little bit of sense. Right. But then he gets the uh, oh, how does he get the the good looking one uh, through a window or something? Uh, he's through got glass. Her, he got her with a razor. Razor blade. in her head. And goes then he goes the up and gets the ugly one. Yeah. No, no, not the ugly one. The good looking one's the one that's upstairs. That's the. Uh... Okay. No, the ugly one's already dead downstairs. Okay, so so he goes up and gets the <laughs> ugly one. And slash, uh, now, anyways, yes, he Leave goes up. Leave a comment up. below. Who, take a poll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, he, you're right. He goes up there. And, and right. the way he kills her... And it's her, the classic scene from like the VHS cover. The head hanging out and the hair hanging down. And, and classic Dario Argento. Mm -hmm. I mean, he uses a lot of, for some reason, glass. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the means to when somebody's killed... The head either goes through, the body falls through the glass. Yep. Don't ask me why that is, well, but man likes to cut girls with glass. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's something that he does in his movies. Maybe and he should get a checkup from the neck up. He probably should yeah. with glass. Oh boy, got some um, issues. Yeah, but um, it, it's it's a, I mean, cinematography wise and the setup of the scene and the kills are are fantastic and great. I mean, mm -hmm. they, he does a great job in it. Uh, even though this movie's lower on the totem pole. But, uh, yeah, so there you get that those two killed, and, you know, the kill count's rising. It's and, rising. And it's rising. It's rising. Mojo kill rising. Count is rising. And so they get back to the hotel where uh, Peter's being another a douchebag again. Yeah. Because, yeah, his, his something water ain't working or something. Right, so the, the landlord sends the daughter up there. Hey, we'll send my daughter. We'll send my fifteen-year-old daughter up there. Ne never there. understood this. It was in a lot of movies back in the days too, mm -hmm. where the hotel owner, 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 the owner, owner. I owned myself a lot of things <laughs> around, you know, here is what I do. Talk about cutting edge, man. Ah! Uh, <laughs> Connie, Connie, that's a good one. That's a good one. Ah. Sometimes that's the best uh, humor. I gotta have a drum and a cymbal. In uh, I wish I could. I was looking at the channel a little bit more because. Um, well, look at it, man. They, ain't they, nothing happening they've here. They've always got good stuff to say. Ain't shit happening um, here for about ten minutes. I, I got a phone call just when the Italian lady was stealing the book. Mm. Oh, so Chris W's watching it. You, we're a little bit more ahead uh, uh -huh. at this point. Uh, heck, we might as well just make them commentaries from now on. That's too. right. I might know? as well. Uh, that's kind of what we do anyways. I press play Certainly and we what go. we used to do. Um, yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, is there something wrong with a wet, naked Italian woman? <laughs> not, not if they're voluptuous. Um, so anyways, I, I, I was and mentioning... that's the word I like. I was mentioning how... I like voluptuous. Back in the day, the the like Italian... like Or in the old movie... Like, the, the, why are you always saying shit about the Italians? The whole... <laughs> the, the, uh, well, even in the Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> Hound of the Baskervilles, you know. Oh, now we're having a go at the British. The, <laughs> the, the owner, who is usually the older father, who is, uh, you know, working his daughter to death, you know. Yeah. Cleaning laundry. That's what you have him for. Wiping things down and scrubbing the floors, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. They send them Righteous. up to do the work. And it, much like in this movie where uh, he sends his daughter, who's Peter's like... Being a douchebag and looking and at doesn't her. Doesn't she literally going, just go up there? And, <laughs> yeah, it's done. And, yeah, yeah. And she should have just gave him that look, like really. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and rubs up against him as as they pass on by, and he's like, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, it doesn't an Anne come in like right there and go, oh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm a little young, yes. huh? And Daria, uh, Daria Nicolil, Nicolodi, yes, mm -hmm. uh, the beautiful, uh, as he says, gray teeth. Uh, Look at her teeth here. Well, uh, maybe they'll show up. Maybe, maybe they'll zoom on the teeth. Oh, and then she looks beautiful. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, except beautiful for them. Dress except for them gray ass it's teeth. It's all right. It's all right. Um, so Peter gets another um, letter thrown under the door. Well, two times a day, people. It's and not th hard. And th through the brush. And through the scene. <laughs> yeah, twice a day. You better brush. Uh, through the scene, uh, you get the killers like hiding in the uh, like hallway because these cleaning people come yeah, out and stuff yeah. like that. And, um, you know, yeah, you, you kind of get that. And he gets a, a, another letter. Yes, another letter. Um, and they're always another cryptic. Letter. They're always Oh, cryptic. by the way, um, if anybody wants to send me a letter or, um, here, here we go. I, I got a, a, an address. Um, Look at that. You, you can send letters, toys, packages, gifts, 
cards, oval team, <laughs> whatever you want to the late late horse. Envelopes with baby powder in them. <laughs> Seven, oh god, no, please. Uh, Seven eight thirty seven. What's your pieces of paper with human feces smeared on them? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Anyway, give this um, to Ted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one goes to Ted. That son of a bitch. Attention, Ted. Ted, that I open it up. Son of a bitch. <laughs> How it's t- human waste. Tell him to clean his mouth out. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Please, nobody get offended. I love you all. Anyway, so does Ted. Uh, we're just having fun. I don't and love anybody. We come. <laughs> well, maybe he doesn't. I mean, he could hate you. I love I your know. lives. But uh, anyway, I'm not required to love anyone. So no, you, no, you're not. So uh, <laughs> after all of that, he can't. He doesn't see the killer or nothing nowhere because he runs mm. after him like. Uh, and um, then he's going to. The next thing is the interview with this. Uh, I can't Whoever. remember his name for the life of And him. it doesn't But he's the guy matter. who was sort of standing off aloof when the journalist, the At female the journalist was, yes. uh, you know, chewing him a new ass. Yeah, he was just like, yeah, just back against so the he's wall, gonna do nothing. And this guy kind of wants to get a little hardcore. He's, he's a TV, it's a TV show. Right, he's, it's an afternoon TV show, and he's yes, talking about he's a personality. sexual behavior, and, and even Peter Neal makes a comment. Like, Isn't I this will, just Edward, a, I will, Edward. He's like, this is just a daytime show, right? You really yes. want to go this deep, this yeah. dark? Yeah. And, you know, and he, he's struck by the... Lightning! I want to say like the exact word phrasing that he uses because yeah. it's going to stick in his craw yeah. and it's, he's going to remember it later on. Yes, Peter is. Yes, right. yes. Because so, th- know, there's he, a way about how that interviewer is kind of talking to him and he's right. really into it. And yeah, yeah. Right. So so after the interview, you know, you know, this cop who's sort of like the Italian bumbling Columbo yeah, <laughs> who yeah. doesn't actually solve any cases. By the way, <laughs> uh, keep that mindset a second. The movie poll, you guys, for Patreon and the channel memberships, believe it or not, the movie poll, and we've got about 70 votes already between the two on YouTube. I mean, mean, yeah, on YouTube here and on Patreon. We got about 70 votes already, and it's Wednesday. Guess what movie? I've got Clue, Murder by Death, The Ghost of Mr. Chicken, and um, I forget the other movie. Hmm. Uh, guess, Guess which one's winning. I, I don't know. Which one would you think would be winning? I, the one I would pick is the Ghost of Mr. Chicken. But Really? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm a huge Don Knotts fan. But Because Clue, I thought, it's going to run away with it. Clue no. is big, big, big. Uh, Dave loves Murder by Death. He hated that I put that in together, but we'll still watch it one of these days. But Miss, the Ghost of Mr. Chicken with Don Knotts is, is running away with it. It's Don Knotts, baby. Two days ago, it wasn't. Clue was winning. But now, the Ghost of Mr. Chicken just took off. So we may be watching, which I'm we happy talked about, about doing that at one time. The go- yeah, the Ghost yeah, of Mr. Don Chicken is just such a oh, a weird looking human being. And thank you, Tracy Asterio, for putting the links you, up like for when our he was Patreon growing up, in the channel. You just had to look at him and go, there. It's kind of like the guy that played Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson. You just look at him and go, "There's only one thing you're destined to do, and that's just to make people laugh." Because just look oh, at yeah. you. No, you know? Don Knotts was a one of a kind <laughs> look. Yep. King person, and he just was fantastic. My so, favorite part in that movie, if we ever did, yeah. it's just there's always someone in the background who goes, Attaboy, Luther! <laughs> <laughs> you never see him. You never see him. And, and, and I do that at home. Though. He's always I always looking. do that to the kids. Attaboy, Liam! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you don't get it, you don't get it. But, yeah. you know, if you've seen the movie, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> so, if, if you haven't joined Patreon yet, or, or the, even the channel here, mm. uh, please do, because we have movie nights every Friday, and they're fun as heck, and we talk before the, before the movies. Mike, and, Mike, 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 um, Mike, 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 and, and it looks like the ghost of Mr. Chicken is out, and you, you guys are surprising me again, because I thought it would be Clue. But anyways. Clue, uh, Shmoo. Listen. Okay, so. Well, it's got Tim Curry in it. So. And any movie with Tim Curry in it is worth watching. Early, uh, earlier uh, in the film, before what we're going to talk about, uh, there was a kind of um, point of view of uh, this location, mm-hmm. this basement location, yeah. where it's just like cement walls, and there's some pictures, a basement sort of like, and you see the, uh, yeah, pictures. Pictures did you of see like film hanging, pe- or did we not see that yet? I think so. Okay. I'm not quite sure, but there, and then you see this. Which you presume like a file. you presume it's the the house of the killer, right. and there's like a file folder he's going through. Man, these are like you know his yeah. kill list. 
Yes. You know, yeah. he's got his, his, his hose all lined up. But a key is left in the door to that basement. Oh, yes. Okay? Yes, yes, and yes. They do, they do make a point to make sure you that. see that. Mm-hmm. So he's going after a prostitute. And this is probably the second best looking woman in the movie. Oh, jeez. Well, don't you think so? Uh, yes. And her teeth are not sure. too dingy. Yeah. Go ahead. So, you know, he, he's going to, you know, he picks her up, right? Doesn't the killer pick her uh, up? He does uh, pick her up. Pick her up. But, but during we... during the same time mm-hmm. that uh, Gianni is riding a motorcycle, and this is where... Is it Gianni? Or was... I don't think it was Gianni. I think it was another guy. Well, she left with Gianni on the motorcycle Pick it up a second. I'm telling you. Well, no. I know. I remember. But do you remember when he they left? Did they did leave were... together, but it did not look like Gianni. Okay. So if it's not Gianni... Because I think the guy had a helmet on, so we couldn't tell. So maybe it's another guy, but nevertheless... Yeah, she left him, went for another one. Uh, could have done it, but... And this scene, I can't stand, man. When he drops this girl off it's, in it's the middle of nowhere. It's a terrible scene, yes. And then... This is an, a drawn-out scene uh, during the middle this of this Doberman, movie There's a Doberman that's Doberman, behind this gate. Doberman behind a big gate, yes, yes. Is Buck Wild. And now she's all alone. this gate is pretty tall. It, it is a tall gate. Now, I would, how tall would you say that gate? Maybe 10 foot? Maybe yeah, 8 foot? About 10 foot, yeah. And, and Elsa... Eight at the minimum. Elsa, well, eight, maybe eight feet. And that dog climbs over that thing. He, that dog is so mad, he gets over that fence and starts, oh, starts tracking her down. They're like the incredible Mr. Limpet. But let's not... Uh, oh, I used to watch it every time it was on Channel 43. Lo- love that movie, love that movie. But anyways, um, yeah, we don't want to interrupt the scene because, yeah, Elsa's there, and Elsa's just... This just, reminds me of the scene in Suspiria where she's running through the woods. Yes, yes, yes. Through, and so she's on this guy's property. Yes. Um, the same property that we've seen... The who killer. We, predicament, the, or, or predicament I don't know killer. if we know it just yet, Yeah. but she's going to go into that house, the key's going to be in the door... But and this dog's mauling her. Oh, I know. And it's just drawn out, and you feel so bad. Like, filming this, you know, it's, it's you know, constantly the dog is attacking. Man. She's falling. She's running. She's trying to escape. She's jumping over another right. fence. She jumps over, and that, that, that dog clears it. Oh, yeah. He's, I a, mean, he's a show dog. We used to have it, though. He's a show a dog. It didn't act nothing like this. Mm-mm. He's a show dog. Oh, and yes. Ooh, there she goes, over the yeah, fence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look at this. Look at this. Or no, wait, no, this dog finds a way through, don't he? He does. They don't show him jump over this fence. Yeah, dog. he don't jump over but this fence. Or does he? She... Is he backing up? No! No, we're wrong. He's backing up. He's going to clear it. He, he vaulted over Holy it. Moses. Yes, My he does God. vault it. So the Doberman vaults it and still starts chasing the woman on the property now. How she's horrible. Getting, she's getting closer to the house. Mm-hmm. And she's going to make her way as the dog turns the corner and attacks her. It's just out of total desperation. Yeah. She has no idea where she's at. Right. She has no idea what's going on. She just finds an open door and goes in just to get away from this damn dog. Right. And while she's there, she finds all these pictures of the dead girls. girls which because, have been in the news. Yes, it's been in the news. So she she notices it. And she sees these papers that I think have names of people... All and, these files and things? Yeah, so people that I think the killer wants to either get, kill, right. or, or do something. And she stuffs them in her pockets and everything mm-hmm. and, you know, tries to get away. But as she's going up the steps she to the hears, living room. She hears footsteps. Yep. Somebody home. Ugh. And then yeah. she, when she she's, goes, she's, uh, she's running, running, running. She's trying to escape. She's trying to be a final girl, but she doesn't. She's, she's nowhere near it. And um, unfortunately... Uh, She's running back through the yard and oh, tries yeah. to hit a fence and falls back. And, and the killer gets her with the hatchet right, right through the stomach. With the axe. The and axe. The, now, you got to love the next scene is a guy mowing the grass. Yeah. And he doesn't notice a body laying there until he's literally this far away from it. Yeah. Then he stops. Yeah. And, and, and then you get, uh, watch him closely, and then you get um, them back at the hotel He's just giddy with excitement. With Peter and Anne and Gianni. Mm-hmm. And the scene where they're trying to figure things out. Because now Peter is trying to figure this whole thing out. Right. Um, and, and he remembers an exact phrase that that guy that interviewed him yes. for the afternoon show said. Hey, boy, Luther! And was it, did he get another, I don't know if he got another letter or something that had that phrase in it. Yeah. So he was putting it together like that phrase and this phrase. That he sounds said exactly just like so similar. That interviewer. So that, that, they, yeah. they, you know, whip out a, a map and a phone book, find out where this guy lives, and evidently he's in the book. And 
Edward Stewart says, that's an awesome t-shirt you got on. Oh, that's right. This was the OG yes. shirt. I had the first Late Late Horror <laughs> Show shirt. Edward Stewart's got one. Yes. Does it? Yeah. Yep. 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 This was the, the very first one that was made. Yeah. Um, before we ever had merch. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, and that. I've worn it so many places, and nobody notices that it's my face on the shirt. Oh, gosh. They never look at it and go, wait, that's you. Have they ever said anything about it? No. 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 Okay. Nobody. Chris W., <laughs> I, I screamed for help, and finally the owner ran out into the street in her PJs. If it wasn't raining, I wouldn't have had an umbrella to keep the dog from biting me. Uh, Chris W.? I was attacked by a Great Dane once. And was a Great to... Dane? Oh, my gosh. Animals are just ter- territorial. My cat bites me once in a while. <laughs> oh, if I owned an animal, it bit me. Uh-uh. Oh, and Chris W., I did get your, um, for uh, late night coffee talk with Tracy and Lisa, uh, Chris W. already sent uh, a letter and uh, her cat pics uh, via my email, Dino Media. 2020 mm-hmm. at iCloud.com. So send in your things for them for next uh, Tuesday. So I uh, already got some from Chris W. Oh, but anyways, um, uh, yeah, so she gets it. Uh, they're in there trying to figure things out. And then right, and they're circling. And where, here's where he lives. Yes. You know, here's where, hey, one body, here's where one lady was killed. Yeah. Here's where another lady was killed. And they're all kind of around where he lives. Yes. Interesting. And he even is kind of saying, like, well, maybe we should tell the police about this. Like, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Don't tell the cops. Yeah. You know, it's like, let, let's see how this plays out. Peter says, yeah. You know? let because in the back of his die. stupid little mind, he's thinking, you know, if I solve this, mm. this will be a hell of a book. Yeah. You know, what if I solve it and the cops For, don't? Because he's so working he actually on his, wants it to go on. Yeah, because he's working on his next novel mm-hmm. also. So well, you know, I guess a writer's always working on that next novel and well, in their true. noodle a little bit. True. So we're about to have thunderstorms, is what we're about to have. If it's not raining already, I, yeah. I get to walk out in the rain in my car. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Anne leaves and she sees Jane in the car, get in the car, yep. and, and take like, off. Jane? She's like Jane, yeah. And earlier too, I think Peter looked out the window and saw Jane drive by, and right. she goes. She's over in New York. New York. And, and they she, call and, you know, nobody picks yeah. up or it's a message or whatever. So, so they're not sure. So that's another little red herring. 44 for to you. 28. Anyways. Um, that's another red herring. I'd like here. to point out the viewership uh, at all times. Yeah, Much yeah, yeah. love, you guys. Um, the, uh, that's, a, that's another one of his red herrings he throws yes. in there. Maybe this fiance has got something to do with it. Right, that, right. You know? So you're thinking, eh, it could be her, it could be whoever. Right. But they think it's that investigator because of the phrasing that yeah. he used yeah and the, guy the phrasing that, that was in him. a letter yeah so they go and stake out his place yes they uh, do gianni and uh neil peter so peter yes. neil peter I'm peter sorry, neil peter. And, and peter neil tells him go on go yeah on. yeah you you it's like shaggy and scoob yeah you guys go check out that creepy basement yeah, I'll, I'll stay here with uh daphne yeah <laughs> <laughs> me yeah. and daphne will check out the upstairs scoob i dropped my glasses <laughs> i can't see a thing right so he's getting a little closer yeah and he basically gets about two feet away from the glass door where the guy is, Ugh. and he sees him talking to somebody. He's talking to somebody. Yeah. He doesn't. We, we're not privy, and we don't think he sees who he's talking to. Right, right, right. But we hear the the journalist because he's a journalist as well. Yes. And he's like, you know, I killed them all. I killed them all. But you know, then boom, axe to the head or whatever. Axe to the head, straight down, deep cut. Right, right. Drops the dome. down. Uh, Split his dome like the Liberty Bell. Throws a s- <laughs> sculpture through the glass. Yep. And then Gianni runs, runs back up. out, looks for Peter, doesn't see him anywhere where he should be, mm-hmm. but sees him farther up a little bit with a bloody rock on the ground and a big old wound in the back of his head. There's another red herring. Yeah. So red. what's going on there? Right. So they, they hightail it out of They get the hell out of Dodge. And, you know, Johnny's all shooken up. Yeah. He's all shook up. <laughs> and, you know, because he's asking, you know, well, who was it? Did you see who it was? Yeah. You know, you know, I don't remember anything. Yeah. And it's always something that Dario has in his movie, in these Jalo movies. Yeah. There's always a character who saw something and they don't really remember. Yeah. And then they sort of have to go through. It's not as prevalent in this movie. It's like a f- constant flashbacks until but, they finally remember. Yeah, it's a, there's always a character that's got something in the back of their mind. They know the answer. Yeah. Um, and the, it's like I said, it's not as prevalent in this one as it is in, say, like three or four of his other ones. But yeah, it, it's there. So. Yeah. 
again, this movie's and we'll we'll talk about it at the end, but you know. um, he's uh yeah, we're through an hour already. We're whipping what? through this. Uh, but skip ahead. He, he's um he, he's he's got a big old wound, and man, it looks like a big old wound, and, oh. and he acts like there's it's no big deal. That's nothing. A little, it's just a flesh wound. Little dizzy, but and I'm not talking a little cod. Yeah. It's a and you better that, stay with me. He should be in the hospital, man. Get, right. But he's like, it's no problem. Yeah, it's see, no she's problem. pretty right there, but then yes, she's she going to open her mouth, and you're going to see those cigarette butts in there <laughs> for teeth. Well, I, I will give you this. They did, you know, I mean, back in the day, it was a big, you know, smoker. Uh, you know, Italy was big. on Like, Fran- France was, you know, I think they gave, the government gave every citizen free packs of cigarettes on a well, daily I basis. they didn't have toothbrushes. You know, I think... I think, you know, the big cigarette companies... Uh, do I buy toothpaste or do I buy cigarettes? I buy cigarettes. <laughs> no, they gave them away. Hey, give me the cigarettes. They, they put They're a promotion... Up. Well, they put... The, the governments in, in France and Italy especially, they put out promotional uh, government um, commercials saying no. uh, every... Once you hit 18... 18? Every, every, I thought it was four. Every citizen uh, gets a free back of... Uh, a free pack of uh, cigarettes. Once you get to be four years old, you get a free pack. Once a week. Once yeah. a week, though. Well, that's a lot. Uh, because they knew once a week they a would go smokes. out and buy more. So um, they got them hooked. Yeah. So that's just how it was back in there, uh, the day. You know, late seventies or back 80s. in the day. Um, the Happy Plague Doctor, five dollars super chat. Oh, thank you. Ah, oh, I remember the Road Warrior, the one they called Max. I remember the Road Warrior. I remember the one they called. Max. You know what's funny? Thank I just, you, the I just watched Weird Doctor. Science the other day. Oh. And it's got the, the one guy from Road Warrior in there, the, the whatever his name was, Fez or, or whatever, with the pink mohawk. Yes, he, yes. He, He's in that movie, playing yeah. almost the exact same character. Right. But <laughs> that's kind of funny. Yeah. So, so we get to, uh, after all of that happened, um, we get another Anne is going to spend a night, him. and that's when they get... They look like they're about to get a little romantic. Yeah. And, and we then get another flashback. Flashback scene. to the. Yeah. Right. And this one's a the brief beautiful one. Beautiful transgendered woman. It's a. Um, it's a another point of view. You could tell somebody is watching through the trees. Yes. Of of uh, the woman with the red shoes, uh, walking with a guy down there. Yes. And I don't think we get much else apart from you know a shot of the shoes and, and watching that brief little scene. But I don't yeah, know, it seems and, like and, an unhealthy obsession with red heels. Right. Well, and this time she actually gets killed in the vision. Well, a, we a knife to. I don't the, know if we see the knife go in yet, but we do see the flash of the blade, yeah. so you know what's coming. Because I think there's another. I want to say when I was watching this. Okay, again, I there thought was it was scene. there, but, but either okay. way, you know what's coming. Oh, and, and what do we find out? We find out that. that his agent, Peter's agent, yes, is having an John affair Saxon, with his fiance. Bulmer, that's right. Uh, is having, yeah, having an affair because, with uh, uh, Jane. Peter comes to his office saying, "You know what? All this stuff that's going on, you know, yeah. Now I've been, you know, attacked or whatever. You know, I, I need to get out of here. Yeah, he you needs know, to get out of. I'm getting Dodge, out of Italy. Italy. Get out of Dodge. Yeah. And he's telling, him, "Well, just just wait another day. Wait till Friday. You know, right? like yes. maybe he's got a big interview or something. Wait till then. Then you can go." But. Um, Tina Turner got all the best lines in Thunderdome, so it's terrifying. <laughs> You're just a raggedy man. The transgender was in the red shoes. Yes, Edward Stewart. Yes. Yes. We were talking about that before. Um, before, when we were going to do this movie maybe a month ago or something, I, I read up more on it, and I just I neglected to do that for tonight's show. I'm sorry. That's but, all right. But it's all on there if you want to find it. It's it's there. Yeah. IMDB and the trivia will have that it was a transgender actor. And you can look up that person's name from there and, yeah. and find out more about them. Yeah. Because uh, that's what I did, but I just, it's all out of my brain. Because when I learn something new, something old gets pushed out. Uh, exactly. So. I hear you. So, so, so yeah, so there, um, where are we at now? He we're, wanted to get out of there, and then when Peter leaves, yes. all of Jane's right there hiding in the back of the office, comes out there, there and John Saxon's getting some. Yes, yes. You know, bless his heart. If John Saxon can get a little, I, I'm okay with it. Well, yeah. I like Johnson. So, so, so we know Jane and his agent are kind of hooking mm-hmm. up, and um, uh, Jane gets a package in the mail. Yeah, uh, she's got her own little, you know, I don't know if it's a, if it's a flat. I don't know if if she's staying at the place where Bulmer is staying. It's it's just a room she's renting out. Not like okay. a, like in in Italy. Yeah. Even to this day, you know, 
there are hotels and motels and stuff, but uh, a lot of people just rent out their little rooms, you know, to, mm-hmm. to spend the, the well, like a vacation nice or something like room. that. But but she's in just a room because later on she says, yeah, I'm in a room above a flat on this okay. street. All right. Uh, not in quite that way, but... Um, and there is a package when she gets home from... Uh, it's the red stiletto she, yeah. heels. She makes some plans that she's going to see Saxon yes. for lunch. Yes. And um, there's a package in it. Yeah, it's a pair of those red heels. Yeah. She doesn't necessarily get what's going on. She don't know. Mm. She's just looking at him, likes them. Hey, Frontier Studies, what's going on? All right. And we get uh, Saxon just wandering around a uh, kind of an interesting looking, uh, maybe this is what they're talking about, sort of futuristic. I, I don't know. It's all concrete. I don't I don't. It know. don't look any, yeah. But I, it doesn't I look, look like saying. Rome. I wouldn't look at this and pick that it was Rome, but there you go. And well, he's t- watching. T- ten years in the future, it's supposed to look futuristic? Right. I mean, That's I don't right. know. But anyways, yeah, John Saxon's. I mean, maybe around. that building. I don't know. A little different. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anything about architecture. Oh, whatever. My last name's not Vandalay. And yeah. um, <laughs> he's Vandalay. watching, you know, he's just people watching, watching a yeah. couple break up, watching kids. He's waiting for Jane. Right, to meet him. Yes. They're going to have some lunch. And, and what some... we're going to see is um, yeah. someone, another point of view shot, someone's going to come up a little closer to him and stab him in the gut. Yes. We don't necessarily know who does it, but they do it. It's almost Hitchcockian. I think I think Hitchcock did a scene like this in a yes. movie. Where it's just like right out there in, in broad daylight, out in the open, yep. and and a crowd gathers around him, and we do see the red high heeled shoes, and we do see a particular skirt pattern. Yes, walking over there, she looks, turns, and walks away. Yep. yep. Now we're presuming that's Jane, okay? And later on in the film, when we see her again, she is wearing a dress that has that same pattern on it. Yeah. So did she kill him? We don't see the person who killed. Uh, John Saxon. Yeah. But she does say on the phone later, I did something crazy, you know, I'm going to kill myself, because um, she, she tries to call Peter. And that's where and, that's where this movie takes a little bit of a different uh, kind of storyline than a lot of his other movies, right. because usually it's it's the one killer, you know. Right, and this you, one it's not. And this one it's... And uh, Gianni... Could be possibly three. Yeah. But anyways... I if think you're Jane, right. If Jane killed... I think that was Jane. Uh, yeah. And you'll look online, and there's nothing super definitive, but I think it's pretty obvious that she yeah. did that. Um, but we get Gianni. Gianni, who is still bothered by what he can't remember right. from the night before, yes. decides to go back to the house just mm-hmm. to see if something will jog his memory. And yeah, he kind of remembers something that got said yes. by the person with the axe. Right. Goes back to his car, presumably to tell Peter about it, well, there's a killer waiting in the car, and he chokes him out, sort of. Yes. You know, he's got one of those uh, garrots, and yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. he chokes him real good. Yeah. But Johnny does turn, look, and we do see a flash in his eye that he does recognize the person who's back there. We get a look yes. of surprise. Yes, yes, Who yes. could it be? There's lots of people that it could be. We just don't know. Yeah. And he does the classic head to the horn. I mean, we if know. I ever die we, in a we co- know, but, yeah. If I ever die in a car, yeah. I want to go... Uh, <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> we, we, we don't want that to happen. Oh, I, I don't want it to happen, but <laughs> if it has to be, that's I, I just I want that horn to go off. Edward Stewart's oh. a Saxon, master in judo. Shotokan always liked his style and crane style. Yep, uh, and he's a master between the sheets, too, evidently. <laughs> I, I hear, I hear. Um, Master Blaster. Okay, so anyways, uh, movie's coming to an end here, but uh, after that kill, uh, Anne finds out that Jane is in town. Right. She calls, they speak, yes. she, and she's being kind of vague. I, I, you know, this, if I did something crazy, I'm going to kill myself. I, I need to, you know, she's like, where are you at? I'll be there in a minute. Yeah. Well, before she can get there, she's, you know, Jane's sitting at the table. Yeah. And an axe just smashes through the window. This is beautiful. This is beautiful cinema right here. Yeah. The arm just gets chopped, chopped up. Chopped I mean, right Yes, off. you can tell it's bloody fake. Yeah. That's fine. But then there's this whole almost operatic scene of her turning and blood just spraying all yeah. over the wall. And she goes down. It is and you're, an amazing and, kill in a movie. Yes, and you're right. The, the flashback. To oh the right! Knife right after that is right after that with uh, the scene of the scene of the stiletto, the stiletto, the original transgender beach. woman, and she's stabbed in the gut a few yes, times. Yes, yes. And he, ta- you see, male hands 
take the shoes. Yes, yes. And evidently, this again, this is in broad daylight. Nobody sees it. Is that a connection? One kill in broad daylight, another kill in broad daylight. Yeah, I, wonder, I don't know. I would love to go deep in his Dario's mind. I mean, there may be some why. articles on this, but I didn't get to them. Yeah. But this is one of those that's just a little different than his others. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of why I asked if we could do it. It's it's a little different. Now, when Anne gets to Jane's apartment, yes. when she opens that door, there is this weird metal spiky structure. And if you've been watching enough horror movies, you know somewhere before the end of the movie, <laughs> that's going to come into play. Somebody's Some way, get it. shape, yes. or form. Yep. That's a dead giveaway. Oh, All yeah. right? Someone's going to get it on that. Yes, yes. Uh, It's just a matter of who and a matter of when. But who is the woman that comes in and, and is gets... In a scene before this, okay, uh, we're at the police station. We find out about. Um, oh, is I, that Jane? This no, is when no, we no, find no, out about the Jane, prostitute. Okay, we, we find out about the. Yeah. The detective finds out about the prostitute that okay. got killed. Okay. Because this is all like ar- ar- around around now. Yeah. And Al Altieri, his partner, female partner, is That's interviewing right. That's right. a yeah. Filipino housekeeper that used to work for that the journalist who said, "I killed them all. I killed them." Yeah. And that. You know, there was some funny stuff going on in there and, and things. No, wait. No, wait. Is that right? Is that right? I think that's right. Yes. And it, it almost sounded. Oh, my God. I could be botching this up. Somehow it turned out that he was having an affair. I don't know if she was having an affair with him, too. Eh, I don't. This Jane might have been involved with that guy. It I didn't catch that. Because they say you... that he had a girlfriend. Who is at the house all the time? Okay, well maybe. So she there go, go. She ends up going to Jane's place. Yes, yes. All right. So maybe. See, that's what I'm saying. In the writing, there's some gaps where you've yes, got to. Yes. So. And this is where you get. It certainly wasn't Bulmer that, right. that this housekeeper was working for. Right, right, right. Because that was just a little flat, and he's just there visiting. He yes. doesn't live there. Yes. So it was that. It was the killer, and. And this is where we get the big reveal. So I think we find that. Jane is also having an affair with this guy yeah. while she was in Italy. Yeah. And maybe she knows more. Maybe she knew more. I don't know. But Altieri goes there. And when she sees Jane dead on the floor, yes. we just see the shadow of an axe come and pfft, she gets hers. And the person standing the, as it pans up, it's Peter, Peter Neal. Neal. Peter Neal has the axe. He and you're like, killed. oh. What's going on he's, here? He's killing. He's right. killing. And... and the, yeah, yeah. The uh, the detective ends up there because he knew where his partner was going. Right. And, you know, this is sort of where, you know, finally he gets it on the last page of the book. Yes. Um, you know. There's a whole scene going on here with with uh, Peter and the dead body. Right. And the detective. And then Anne eventually comes right. in. Right, Anne's there. And obviously, you know, he, he says, you know, I didn't kill those other women. I didn't kill them. You know, yes. there's the two here. Right. He killed them. I didn't kill... And, and he realizes that, you know, the, the detective realizes it would have been impossible. Yeah. And they were always quoting Sherlock Holmes in there, you know, when, yes. when you take away every, all the, you know, whatever is improbable, yeah. the impossible, whatever, everything that's left, however improbable must be the truth. Yes. And well obviously said. it must have been, you know, Peter Neal doing... So what happened was... Then we start. To hey, Zardoz, what's going on? Put it together that it was Peter Neal that killed that journalist who was actually the killer. Yeah. But he wanted the killings to go on a little bit longer. Yeah. So that he could get rid of Jane and get rid of probably have to get rid of Anne too. Right. You know, and maybe come up with a really cool book idea. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> but what I believe has really happened, and Dino and I were talking about this before the show. Yeah. Is that I believe that all these flashbacks that we saw were probably repressed memories of Peter deep, deep yes. in his mind. And that's Neal. probably where a lot of the inspiration and the drive for, the for film, these for the, sort, books, for yeah. the books, these, you know, misogynistic, per- you know, perverted, perverted yeah. kind of books came yes. from. And then when a killer started killing using his books as inspiration, yeah. I don't know, maybe that bloodlust just sort of came to the surface. Kind of. And he yeah. wanted to get his hands a little red, too. Because, because initially it was the uh, that in mm-hmm. interview interviewer that um, was technically the killer. Yes. You know? Yes, and, it was. Um, uh, somewhere we believe that 
when Gianni was over there that Peter went in the house and mm-hmm. did the killing. I, I mean, it's, it's out kind of a plot hole. That, it's, it's a stretch. But it's a stretch. But it's what happened. You would think Gianni would see, you Maybe know. Maybe it was in the shadows. But, yeah. So. But then we have to also believe that Peter took a rock, bashed himself on the head with it. Exactly. Enough to cut his head. Exactly. And he had to do it pretty fast. I mean, he's an older dude. I mean, yeah, he likes to get his cardio riding his bike, but I don't know if he can run as fast as Gianni can. Right. Especially Gianni, who is scared, trying yes. to get the hell away to save his life. Yes. I don't know, but that's what we have to believe in this movie yeah. to accept and, the ending. And and we're ending it in, in a few minutes here. Uh, somebody so was the, asking oh, real yes. quick. Uh, definitely tonight, the overnight radio shows. Uh, I mixed it up a little bit. It's it, We do start off with the Johnny Dollar, a couple newer Sherlock Holmes again. But then there is a mix of some shows I've never played before. And um, you might be, Shandu the Magician is in there, uh, Edward Stewart, uh, kind of towards the middle, Lugosi? middle of the night, but not Bella Lugosi oh. one. It's the old time radio shows. Damn. There were like 300 of the them played. Shandu. Uh, I wish there were 300 Bella Lugosi Shandu movies. Right. But, but, <laughs> but um, look forward to that. There's a little bit of everything there tonight. There's even a couple newsreels. Uh, towards the end that are kind of interesting to listen to with a little story plot kind of in there. So listen to those two. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. But anyways, right now you get me and Ted. So uh, mm-hmm. while, while all of this was going so on, up. The, uh, Peter went and yeah, took... Before he can be arrested, he's not going to be taken alive. No, he took a razor blade and went across his throat and blood was squirting everywhere, fell to the ground. And then the police officer and Ann go out to the car... Then the police officer. Mm-hmm. Well, he tells Ann that yeah. you know I, you know maybe he had some suspicions about Peter. Yeah. He looked him up on Interpol and found out about an incident that happened back in Rhode Island, that you know, that you know he was suspected in a in a murder or he was, you know never never obviously there was no evidence for it, but that he was certainly um, a person of interest in that situation that happened. So uh, he goes back in because he's got to, whatever, maybe get some details of the crime scene. That's usually what a police officer does. But when he gets there, there's no body. There's yeah. some blood. He checks the blood, and he sees he, the razor's on the ground. He picks the razor up, and, oh, it's a prop razor. You press the little button, and blood just comes squirting out of what is presumably a plastic razor. So he is not yeah, dead. Yeah, so it was a fake razor mm-hmm. that shoots out blood. That he, so there's another little you know, twist, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, and yeah, so, it, it's going to be the axe again, isn't it? It's going to be the axe again. So the, the police officer kind of goes down, and you see the body of Peter behind. Yeah, he him. picks up a I think a Shadow. handkerchief. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. When, oh, there's the axe to the back. Yeah, and then uh, to end this movie, the way right. it ends is with Peter. Uh, well, when he gets the axe in the back of the police officer, that right. structure, that art piece, which the spikes, something Fred Sanford put together. Yeah, in the oh my God! Yard. Remember that episode? Yeah, where, where he put <laughs> this is yeah, art. Yeah, that huge tower of Babel of junk. <laughs> Fred Sanford. Yeah, Fred Sanford said that's that's not junk. It's, it's art. art. Yeah, it's art. Uh, well, I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> it was pretty cool. That steps you could walk up. But it that and... spiky art thing fell against the the door, mm-hmm. and here comes Anne because she heard stuff. Yep. She's going to try to get in the door, and Peter is going to try to eliminate her too. Right. You know, and she's the last one. As he's coming to her, she finally pushes the door open, and that sculpture impales him. Impales him right into the, the wall. wall. Yeah. And I told you, you he's, knew it was going to happen. You yeah. just didn't know who. And yeah, he's he's totally impaled and yep, he's her. screaming. There's blood everywhere. And the film just kind of ends with her screaming in the doorway in the rain. Yep. And it's just a very nihilistic sort of ending. And yeah. yeah. Lot lot going on. Like I said, probably could have been some plot the writing could have been tightened up a little. Unless yeah. he purposely wanted it to be sort of vague some some people do you know yeah i'll definitely start doing this for the live streams too you guys uh blocking this spam uh, i kind of leave it open for new people to come in during the live streams like this but uh i'm gonna have to do the same thing i guess that i do for the old time radio shows overnight mm-hmm. because i think they got a deal with somebody because they they are all over youtube all over the world 
these bots get in and spam everything. Every live stream. <sighs> Is it everybody so, or just you? No, everybody. Everyone. If you've got a live stream going on, they're, they're spamming it. Well, you would think that so, YouTube so, would do something about that. You, There you go. But yeah, I'm no YouTuber. But. Overall, the, the this movie, again, like I said, for me, I'm not sure about you, but it's on the bottom. I mean, with all the love I have for the Giallo films that Dario mm-hmm. Argento has done, uh, and I and love And other Giallo films in yes, general. Yes, yes. Well, there's other ones that I'd like to recommend to you that, that's yes. some pretty cool Please ones. Please do. Um, but the... Uh, they're, I mean, some of the greatest movies I've ever seen in the horror slasher genre. Mm-hmm. And um, this one is kind of at the bottom for me like of what he's done. Either three you know. or three and a half out of five. That's what yeah, I would give. Yeah, I'd give it a three, three and a half out of five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, not yeah. a waste of your time. But not a waste. No, not something no. I'm going to run out and buy on Blu ray and put on my collection. Exactly. exactly. But I have seen, actually, I've, this is probably the. F- Watching it here uh, on the screen here while we were talking about it, that's probably the fifth time I've seen it, and that might be it. Yeah, yeah, I, th- <laughs> I think so too. That might with be me, <laughs> I, th- I think I'm done with t- the other ones, like Deep Red, Bird with any of the other. One, I-, I could uh, Deep Red, I can watch every man. year. Yeah, Bird yeah. with the King. And I also like to let it go a couple years because then sometimes I forget. Yes, yes, about the little twist at the beginning there. If yes. you don't catch it, I'll forget about that. Um, Musk was supposed to uh, fix the Twitter bots, but he probably creates them too. Who knows? Oh yeah. Uh, Edward Stewart <laughs> does say all of YouTube, but big money in advertising. Yes. Um, I see it at all streams I produce or watch. The Zardoz. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and thank you, Zardoz, for coming on the other day. Uh, that was very interesting talking with you. And he's a first-time author. Oh no, kid! Um, Congratulations. Mixed magic. Uh, Mixed Magic Saga. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a trilogy of books, kind of like I a. Presumed with the word saga, and we're getting more than one. Right, 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 right. So uh, hopefully that goes good. Ted just likes uh, to see people dragged behind trucks. <gasps> He's still bringing that up. Dave Fouffet. That was old, amazing. Good old Dave Fouffet. Bird with the crystal plumage. Bird right? with the crystal oh. plumage. That scene. That was so bitching. <laughs> that was a good scene. Oh, you know what? That's what I love, man, about Dave. Uh, he, he's always he he he's got a mind, man. He remembers oh. those little things that me and Ted have said. That movie's worth watching over and over again, just for that. just for that scene. Just, just for dragging on it. It's just like, oh, oh damn, damn, damn! <laughs> just when you think it can't get anywhere. Okay, so uh, uh, Chief Mojo Rising, you changed, oh. changed your name. Change your name, Happy Plate Mojo Doctor. Hail Chat and Hail Dino. Uh, did something happen um, with the Happy Plague Doctor? Um, Maybe he's Polish. Message deleted. Let's see. Um, hopefully you're being all right. I have a buddy who likes to trap them. Um, I guess you might have been saying some bad things. Just keep it chill, a Chief Mojo Rising. Um there always comes a point. I'm just just warning you. There always comes a point when uh, be yourself. But if if the chat isn't the place for you, um, and if you you know eventually you get out of hand and it rubs too many people the wrong way, uh, you know some people go. But uh, I'm not sure what was said. I'll, I'll look back on the replays. On always what was remember intent. Being, Yes. Jokes are jokes, and we're all supposed to be able to laugh at each other. Exactly. And it, but if you're intentionally trying to be mean, well, that's different. Uh, exactly, exactly. So I hope that's not the case. That's uh, why I joke about the things I do, because I'm not trying to intentionally exactly. be mean to anybody. Oh, no. T- t- listen. Me I t- make fun of fat people because I am huge. R- there you go. And I figure I can do that. Well, you know, and... and Please, look, I, at, look at that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> look at that. Ted's did, done a whole show. Oh, I found the tank top. No! I found the Superman tank top. You found a Superman tank top? It was buried. Top. I found it. It's not. It didn't I'll, disappear. I'll wear it next I time. I thought it disappeared. I'll wear, I'll wear it for the next oh movie we God, did. Oh, my God. Okay. You it's might, back, You're going to get boobage, male boobage, That's on right. the next stream then. That's right. Um, but, uh, yeah, Ted did a whole stream with his boob just hanging out. Why not? But, I'll, you know, I'll do it topless if y'all but want. But, listen, that's the thing. Um... Hey, KJ. Let what's Dino going know on? if you want me to do a topless. Hey, K- hey KJ. Flood his email. Good to see you. Uh, uh, Dave Fouffet says, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, 
with me and Ted, listen, um, you get what you get with what we do. Um, sometimes we may go a little bit too far in what we say. Sometimes, never in jest. I mean, never in in jest. In, in jest and never meaningful in a bad way or anything no. like that. We're being ourselves talking as two, two friends who right. just want to talk about a movie, and you guys happen to be there with us. Um, and, right. oh, let me see. We're letting you be involved in our conversation. Uh, well, that's another thing, Chief Mojo Rising. Oh, what happened? Do not, uh, no politics, no religion, and no uh, past two years talk. None of that. I do not want to hear the P word. I do not want to hear the C word or well, we none can't, of that We can't stuff. say puta. <laughs> but um, just letting you know that. Uh, okay, so there you go. Um, Frontier Study says OnlyFans, Ted? OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to get your, uh, self your OnlyFans page? My OnlyFans. Uh, you, you could make a living in there. You, you, know, you, you know what the sad you know, thing is? Anyways. I have heard of that, Yeah. but I, I'm out, man. You know, I'm not on any kind of social media. <laughs> I've heard it, like looking at news stories, but yeah. I don't know what it is. Hey, it's just a site. Of course I know what it is. It, right. It's just a site where, like Pornhub or anything, except you got to pay for it to get oh. stuff. Like stuff from that from me? person. So people would pay like it, me say to... you were OnlyFans. Yes, they would pay you to be able to Just see do what I do. see your posts of you. You know, really? you, you could take poses like George Costanza on the couch. But no, let, let's not ever do that. Is there people that but pay anyways, for that? I don't, probably. I don't know why. I don't know. But anyways, hey, listen. Uh, that's what you get from me and Ted. You get two guys just having fun, talking about a movie and things slip out things are said but we love y'all we love the world we're, we're we we want a world that's peaceful and joyful i love the world i just don't love all the idiots um, that are in it well that's true too that's true too that's true too the only so, thing square about this world are so the cats next, that are in it exactly so so next week he won't be here that's right but i'll, I'll the, be 19 years into my sentence next week the anniversary <laughs> So, so the following so, week... Gotta go out with the wife. Yeah, so the following week, we should be on a regular weekly basis. Yeah, we're going to try to get back to weekly. Yes, here. and it's going to start with Flash Gordon. Oh, my God! Which is already posted. So Flash, oh, my God! Flash Gordon will be talking about. It is my... We'll have fun with that. Fourth favorite movie of all time. Okay. King Kong, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, Clash of the Titans, Flash Gordon. Oh, my God. There oh my you go. God. It was my suggestion. Oh, my yes, God. Oh, yes. my God. No, oh my so, God. so oh God. yeah, oh we're, we're going to have fun. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> As you can tell, oh yeah. Uh, this has been a great conversation. I remember the first time I saw it, and I remember the last time I saw it. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Dave Blue Face says, yay! So, uh, it must be a fan, too. Yes. I will be talking a lot. Discussing movies is always fun. And catch Paranormal Show tomorrow. What you talking uh, about? Talking about ufology All and right. aliens They're real. and stuff like that. They're yep. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something. That's all I got to say. There's something, and um, I know there's something. And Friday, Kelsey is going to premiere. Uh, f she's been on the channel before. We've done movie reviews way in the past, but she's out in L.A. She's uh, doing a series uh, every Friday uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's called From the Depths, and she's going to be tackling newer movies. So uh, have an open mind. Uh, listen to what she has to say about the newer movies. Really. Because she's a I, late, late horror show alumni. Yes. Yeah, so, so and, and I and it's growing. The alumni is growing. There you go. And um, so that's going to premiere uh, on Friday and Saturday trivia night. Ghost of Frankenstein Universal. So we'll, we'll have some fun with that. And then Sunday, me and Ginger are back to do our movie review. Uh, Nosferatu. We're going to hit the nineteen at the Werner. Her Warner. Oh, we had Warner a good, good movie. commentary. I love that Yes, movie. me and Ted has done, had a good time with that. We've done a full commentary on it years ago. Uh, me and Ginger are going to hit that hard and, and compare and contrast the Nosferatu's <laughs> and stuff like that. Hit it hard. <laughs> hit it hard. Is hard. <laughs> you so, said uh, hard. It's going to be fun. <laughs> August um, 9th, they're coming back. Uh, this The show this week with live guest hosts were great. Just what I needed this week. Thank you, says Kyle Fart. Thank you, thank you. And yeah, and um, geez, Tuesday again, you'll get uh, Tracy and Lisa, so please send in the, the all of the good stuff there. And um, uh, stay tuned for other things to come. So until next time, you guys, uh, it is 9.30. Uh, we are going to get out of here. That's and right. And what do we always say? Love, peace, and chicken, chicken.